This is a video covering some of the concepts from the first chapter of the Survey of Wheel Text College Physics. Um, I'm using the 10th edition, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about in this first video is the idea of dimensional analysis, which is a really fancy way of saying that the dimensions or the units that we attach to quantities can be treated algebraically. Let me give you an example. Um, most of us are familiar with this equation from high school algebra, d equals rt. That is to say, if you're traveling at some rate, which is the r, and you do that for some time, which is the t, you will travel some distance, which is the d. Let me show you what this looks like in units in this class and in uh, any university level physics class that you will take probably. We're going to use the SI system, that is to say the metric system. So we measure distances and units of meters. So I'm writing the units below the quantity. The distance is a number with some units attached. Those units are meters. Meters is equal to, well, rate is just, in this case, a speed. The units of that are meters per second. And the time we measure in seconds. So notice what's going on here. And this is, we're multiplying these two quantities. Notice what's going on. Uh, in the actual equation right here, we're multiplying some numbers together to figure out a distance. But in physics, units are very important, so we have to multiply the units together also. And notice if I multiply meters over seconds times seconds, the seconds will actually cancel. This is the old algebra. Uh, one quantity over the same quantity just gets you a one. It might seem kind of strange to talk about units canceling to give you a one. But that's the way we think about it. And then we're just left with meters. So notice a couple things about this. We have the same units on either side of the equation as we have to. Most of you have probably heard that equations have to be the same on the left side and the right side, else they're not equations, right? Well, that, that accounts for the units also. Uh, we use that in a couple of different ways. Let me get rid of all this. Um, the first is just as a check to yourself. If, uh, if you derive an equation, or if you rearrange some equations that you're given to find some information, and uh, it turns out that your units don't match on either side, you've done something wrong. Let me give you another example. This is uh, a kinematic equation, which you will see very shortly. V final is equal to V initial plus... A T. If you don't know what these symbols mean right now, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We will get there. Um, but the V's are velocities. The subscripts F and I just mean final and initial. The A is an acceleration. And the T is a time. So notice, uh, well, let me put in the units that I have here first of all. I've got meters per second. This is the same as the rate we had in the previous slide. Meters per second is our uh, are our units of velocity. And notice that's all by itself on the left-hand side of, the, of this equation. So what we expect is that the units on the right-hand side turn out to be meters per second. Let's see if that happens. Uh, well, this is just another velocity, so I've got meters per second here. Uh, the units of acceleration are meters per second squared. And the units of time, of course, are seconds and you can probably see what's going to happen. That looks like a delta. Let me erase that. Yeah, that's better. Uh, this second will cancel with one of these seconds, and we're left with meters over seconds plus meters over seconds. And of course, when you add units, they don't change. That's just meters over seconds. So the left side and the right side are the same. Uh, it's a good check for yourself to make sure you've done your math correctly. Uh, the other way that it's very helpful is that in some cases it will actually show you how to do the physics. Later in the semester you will see an equation that looks like this. This is the Greek letter rho. We use it to stand for density. And density is defined, three lines means defined. Uh, the density of any object is the amount of mass that object has divided by the volume which that object occupies. Mass divided by volume. So this is just the definition of density. Let's say that you have a problem where you are given uh, the density of an object and the volume of an object, 
and you want to know the mass uh, of that particular object. In other words, you have it's some substance which has some density rho, and you know that you're given a specific volume of that substance, and you want to know how much mass you have. Well, you can see it just from looking at the units. Um, so, to get rid of the, what I need is the mass, which is here in the numerator, which means I need to get rid of the denominator. The easiest way to do that is to multiply by a volume. So if you're given the density of an object, and you are given the volume of an object, well, you just take your density, which is this, times your volume, and that gives you the mass. Notice I haven't done any numerical calculations. I'm just looking at the units. Uh, so the first thing I did was I made sure that I did my math correctly by using the units as a check. The second thing is, is I examined the units to actually give me a little bit of clue uh, as to how to do the physics. So if this is unclear to you, please watch it again or come ask me some questions. But units are very, very, very important.